August 25th. <laughs> Where we going? You see it. Where we going, Joe? <laughs> what city? Oh, we're in Fort Worth, Texas. But well, we're in Fort Worth, Texas at that little spot. Tell them. We'll be at Dickies Arena. <laughs> you know, like Dickies, like the work pants. Yeah, that's where we're going. Yeah, that will be there. Fort mm. Worth, come fuck with us, man. D I C K. Oh, that's the yeah. Stop, right, man. You just wanted to spell dick. I E. I thought we were going to rap with Crazy, trend. man. We can't sell tickets like that. You playing. <laughs> hey, come we'll be in Dick-y Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> it's going down. <laughs> You can get your tickets at the website, yeah. AFSouthShow.com. We're going to where? San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio? I think it's like Freeman's Coliseum or something. Is I, it Freeman? Freeman's that's where Coliseum. we're going. Appreciate that, Craig. Because that's where we're going, Craig. How the hell you going to get fired on your off day, Craig? That's Craig. Because we're going to San Antonio. Don't worry about it. When I go home to San Antonio, mm-hmm. where the buffalo roam. Uh-huh. I'll be there. Say no more, man. Ride the buffalo. I get my tickets from 85southshow.com. But usually I just show up to these shows and tell them I'm Carlos Miller and don't even get no ticket. Facts. I'm on the talent. Come on, man. We ain't bullshitting. Better bring your ass, San Antonio. It's time to turn it up. Hey, man, welcome back to the 85 South Show. Uh, shout out to everybody who been watching this from day one. Absolutely. Did you see the list? Y'all seen that? You saw the list? Mm-hmm. We made it to the complex list. Most of them cried. That's funny as people on the internet. Yes, sir. Number I'm, I'm just, I just wonder how we could be number 10 if I've been telling y'all since day one. That this is the coldest podcast. That list was some bullshit. Isn't it? This is the number one rated black show amongst black people between the ages of three and seventy nine. Mm. <laughs> yeah. This is the number one black TV show on. that ain't even on TV. Ben said that. I bet mm-hmm. said that. Know that. Come on, man. The number one show among strippers, drug dealers. And people who got court dates coming up. We literally record this show for the heart of black America. That's right. Throw them Israelites in there too. We watch y'all too. I didn't I just found out. Yeah, we yeah, watch yeah. y'all too. This is breaking news. That's what I'm saying. We getting we getting through to people on on all planes. So how can it be number 10? Right. It be man. politics in them lists, man. Man, we don't. Hey, we just appreciate the list. I mean, they yeah. make this, do they make this list every year? No. I ain't never heard about the list. The list doesn't have Motherfuckers would have been, been on the list. But, the list but you know what? Man. All I'm saying is we appreciate the recognition. There you go. There you, you go. feel me? I didn't, know, I didn't even know we was internet people. We just people on the internet. Mm-hmm. But either way, we'll take a spot. I'll take a number 10. I'll take a 10. Cause this niggas out here who got whole production crews right. to make comedy skits. They got writers and people who get the lights right. Mm-hmm. And we just niggas who be in here talking shit. Right. So we'll take number 10. We not saying our lights ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't. No, I'm just saying, they perfect. They perfect. They be kicking ass, man. They be yeah. Perfect. Somebody gonna make a list. We're gonna be, we ain't gonna always be number one, but they gonna have to mention us. It's gonna be honorable mention. That's it, be in the conversation. We in the conversation. All labs gotta go through us. Mention bank head and acknowledge. One day they gonna make a documentary about this and they be like, you know, 85 South Show was responsible for 33% of labs in the Northern Hemisphere. (laughs) Be like the Pablo Escobar of labs. Like if you laugh between the years of 2018 and 2027, you were probably laughing at something that we had something to do with. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> we had the market sold up. Giggles, ha ha's, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> laughing my ass off. You know how many asses we laughed off? <laughs> <laughs> we actually invented L M A O. Anything more than three O's was us. Yeah, we own that. <laughs> Straight on. <laughs> Giggles, sniggles, cracking up. 
Teehees, Kiki. Kiki. <laughs> Most of the ha ha. <laughs> Hit the market on Smash. We got some special guests in here with us today. Money Bag, man, introduce us to us. Yes, guests. man, this is the one and only man from ISUPK, my big brother, Captain Tazari Aki. This is my <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah this, he looked in here like he didn't Yana. approve of what we had going on. General Yana, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about when he first walked in the door? Yeah. <laughs> Shut this down. Put the lights off. Shut off this <laughs> I don't approve of none of this shit. Look around. Okay, all right, all right. Let's check it out. We got to check it out. Start doing hand signals and codes and shit. A little head nod, a little head nod. <laughs> no, it's safe. Yeah, yeah, we, like, we made it through the security cool. suite. Mm -hmm. Got a good tour of the spot. As we touring, we Shaman, we, with Shaman means security. So as we touring, we watching everything. Yeah, security. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you see the part where they locked you in here? No. Nah. <laughs> 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 we watching you watch us. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs> you <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? What's Boy, crazy, man. I mean, that's the only ones with hands. Yeah. <laughs> Soon as the door closed right there, you probably threw up all type of signals. Oh, that shit locked from the outside. Mm -hmm. we can't, can't nobody get in here, can't nobody get out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only motherfucker know where the secret entrance is. <laughs> and I got three ninja stars. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Hell no, nah, we chilling. It's a laugh factory. I told you we in charge of all the laughing my ass off, LOLs and all that. Definitely. Giggles, sniggles, inside joke. How you been? I've been good, man. Loving Atlanta. This is like my third trip to Atlanta because I'm from Jersey. Word. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I was born in Jersey City. I live in uh, East Orange now. Right. I, I'm in Harlem. Uh, that's where our school is at. And I actually because school is in Harlem. I do a lot of teaching and battling in Harlem. And uh, but this year, this is like my third trip, and then I'll be back in two weeks in Atlanta. So it's almost becoming like a second home. So that's what's up, man. Pretty uh, good, Atlanta, man. cool little place. Yeah, Atlanta is cool. Like we, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta be careful with certain things in Atlanta, but it's it's, it's cool. Yeah, there's yeah. certain things to stay away from. But. Yeah, like people. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta be, you don't know what you're looking at sometimes. So, like, you know. so you just gotta be careful. But I do like it though. It's a uh, chill spot. Y'all way cheaper than up north too. Easy, yeah. You know what I mean, like houses and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Especially the outskirts out here. Mm -hmm. oh, and you get more bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. Like my house up in Jersey, it's it's decent. But what I pay down here, I went. Um, there's a brother I do shows with, Tommy Sotomayor. He um, his house way bigger, and he pay less. It's like the further south you go, it's, it's cheaper. Oh, yeah. So it's better in the south. Mm. Mm hmm. You get you some land down here. Yeah, listen, we, yeah. we working on yeah. it. Me and the yeah. car, we working on getting a spot down here so y'all can see more of us. Might as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I say if you fuck with it and you hear enough, man, and you can do it, do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like the, the real, like, black renaissance. Like, there's so many different uh, people down in Atlanta, like black people down in Atlanta making a lot of moves and stuff like that. So. Yeah, they say that's the new Hollywood. Yeah, the real Hollywood, yeah. you can call it that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? There's a lot of things you can do down here, so. Hell yeah, let's turn it up. Mm -hmm. Everybody come down here and buy some land and have mm -hmm. a studio, make some movies and shit. Yeah. Turn into Hollywood for real. Mm -hmm. Get the real Hollywood paper out here. Yeah, and then do our style of, of shows and TV shows and movies and stuff right. like that instead of letting it be in control by Hollywood. You know, we can Absolutely. do our own thing. I think that'd be important. That's when you get the real side of black people when we actually do it ourselves. Control the narrative. Yeah, yeah. If you look at like the early good time shows or Martin or even Cosby Living Single and stuff like you seeing like real black shows and stuff like that, they can give you the soul of it. So Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real shit and yeah. you could tell the people made it and right. had some input in there. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just going off what these folks telling them. Right, like, right. And it fucked up shit with Good Times. They stole a lot of that shit from the two writers they had, the black no, it, dudes. It fucked me up when I found out that boy Jane had a white wife the whole time. Man. In real life. <laughs> yeah, 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 real life. I you know, on, on, the, on the TV show, you think he's like a he brother, brother. Yeah. Like he's a black man, black man. Yeah. 
He got a whole white woman yeah. and white chilling in the whole nine, man. That blew my mind. That's how you knew he was acting. <laughs> he was acting his ass off. Boy, that anger that every time he got mad at Florida, he was mad at us. For real. God damn it, Florida. That was real. <laughs> I don't go through this at home. That's what he thinking. Man. <laughs> he ain't had to go home. And, Baby, you know I'm just acting. Look at Florida. You always act. <laughs> <laughs> you know I don't want Florida. <laughs> now, baby, as long as you know me. <laughs> That's what they don't take. James Evans hated going home. Already got to live in the project. He got to look at Florida ass all day. Don't do that. That rough right there. Don't do that. Well, you know, that's good. That lets you know love ain't got no look, man. That's a damn lie. <laughs> nah, that ain't no lie. <laughs> damn lie. <laughs> that's a damn lie. That's why Jane took that job in Mississippi. Didn't take nobody with him. I'll be back. Shit. Nah. Nah, 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 nah. Sick of looking at all y'all. Sick of Michaels and all y'all. That's a little bit of cap because they had to kill him off. Yeah. Oh. You remember before they killed him off, Jane, they tried to make it. First, he went to Alaska. Then he got another job and he went to Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And then he had his accident in Mississippi. You, see, I'm telling you, James was trying to, at the end, James Evans was doing everything you know, that he could to get away from Florida and them kids. He was like, JJ, 37 years old, and he's still living at the fucking house. <laughs> yeah, JJ, what? What is that name you paint? He can't get out the game. He's still talking about some kid, Dynamite. Yeah. Man, you are 36. <laughs> and shit. Like, that's why you got to talk about it's two good times. You got the early good times. And then you got James is gone, so the, the man is out the house good times, mm -hmm. which was indicative to what they did to the black community. When you took the man out the house and you see a woman running it, you see how they act. As opposed to when James was there, you saw authority. Mm -hmm. And you saw once once he left, remember she got remarried mm -hmm. and Buddy didn't even believe in God. Mm -mm. He was an atheist. Yeah, I don't know nothing about How that. she go from Remember, everything was church and mm -hmm. prayer and all that in the early episodes to now you with a nigga that don't even believe in the Lord. Mm. I don't know. was suspicious to yeah, me that's, when that she was got mad. Episodes. When she got mad at J.J. for painting black Jesus. That was true. I was that like, was yo, crazy. you, you tripping. That was true. And they luck was turning up. Yeah. Yeah, that young boy, you see the young boy was doing a whole breakdown. He did an Israelite breakdown on Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. He went yeah. to Revelations 1 and 13, hit skin of bronze, hair like wool, all of that. Yeah. And the mom was like, nah, my Jesus is white. That was wild. That I ain't know. And if you watch the episode, she didn't learn nothing. <laughs> they didn't, they took the picture down, right? Uh, yeah. They That's like what up. we go through on the street. Remember, Jane put it they back up. Nothing. Like, like what we Once do when we teach Jesus okay, at the end. black. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we do we go through the same thing where you teaching Jesus is black. Yeah, she put it up. Black people saying, nah, he's not black. That'd be the biggest pushback. Yeah. You hear that more from black people than white people. Yeah. When it just when you reading out the same Bible we all love. If we all love Jesus Christ, which we do, mm -hmm. and it say he had hair like wool and skin of bronze, what's the big deal with him being black? And that's what you've seen on good times. <coughs> so. That's what you see yeah. everywhere. You, yeah. you Russia, they just put out some pictures of black Jesus. Yeah, now, you know, now black people probably believe what we've been saying, because, you know, when white people say it, they make it true. Mm -hmm. When black people say it, they make it false. Because everybody was running. I saw that all over the internet. When Putin pulled, opened up the casket or whatever he had, and he showing all these images of black Jesus, and not just Jesus, it was the disciples, mm -hmm. and everybody is black. I'm looking at this video and I'm like, we've been teaching this since, like our school got established in 1969. And I'm thinking, we've been teaching this forever. And I knew in my, I knew when he said it, I would see all over the internet, everybody saying, yo, Jesus is black. And that's exactly what they was doing when we were saying it the whole time. So sometimes white people could be used as a prop for the truth because they won't believe it if we tell it. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's the sad part. That we gotta have that battle. Well, and I mean, the book they, that he, the, the the information that he pulled out, like we had it. It's a book called uh, the Russian Icons. So where those images come from, um, everybody may know of the Renaissance era. So the Renaissance era was like when they began to make everything new. So now Jesus don't look the same. King James don't look the same. They change all the artwork. So what Putin is pulling out is the early artwork before the Renaissance, okay. before they made it new. And when you get the book called The Russian Icons, they'll show you as they're painting it white, you'll see the black image in the background. 
So people that believe like Shakespeare, King James, like all of these is white people, they was not. They was Shakespeare black. was black too? Yeah, they was black. Ain't no black, what white man making music like, I mean, writing poetry like that. He's not writing like that, all of them. Like King James come from the Stuarts and the Douglases. Those words themselves mean black. Okay. They call King James, great, great grandfather, the black boy because he was black. So when the Renaissance era come, they wipe, wipe all of that out. A famous quote you could look up, Benjamin Franklin said, we don't want America to be black like Europe. Yeah. Like, so you can look these things up in history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not to get too uh, serious. Are you see it now, I'm thinking about everything. Yeah. But like even with what you're saying, like black people <laughs> not believe. <laughs> All this shit's a lie. He said, I'm thinking, <laughs> he said, I'm thinking about everything. I'm thinking about every goddamn thing. Yeah. So that's just that propaganda that deep in people that even today you can have, like what you said, the information mm -hmm. and still get pushed back from people. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Don't we think of, of everything that the government tells us <clears throat> as conspiracy now? If you take COVID, we call that a conspiracy. I know that shit a conspiracy. The, right, right. You remember the first two weeks they said black people couldn't even get it, then they went back and remade the shit, and then... <laughs> hey, y'all don't remember this shit? Yeah, yeah they said we couldn't get it. First yeah, yeah. week, black, oh, black people yeah, we can't get it. We, 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 we <laughs> talked to all white people. Start washing your legs. Yeah, yeah, right. We were talking big right. shit. Yeah. Black people was on Twitter. Start washing your legs. That's why you, when you don't wash your legs, you get COVID. Black people was on Twitter. Then they went back in the lab, updated that shit. Made it, sec desegregated it. Hey, you know we left the niggas out there. We left them out. They desegregated it. Desegregated that shit, put some stem cells and some cocoa butter in it. Everybody had to get it. Black people aren't getting it. Put some shea butter in it. Spring some goddamn Kool-Aid in there. That's crazy. Yeah, they but went back. Point, like, so if they got conspiracy with that, they cover up every, I'll give y'all a simple one. Um, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, right? Everybody, well, y'all familiar? You, I know you familiar with that, yeah, right? Yeah, that sounds like that. Jake Bass Reeves. Yeah, that, that's t that was a TV show they had with okay. a white um, uh, sheriff with an Indian partner. Mm -hmm. But the real Lone Ranger was a brother, and his partner was a Native Indian. Mm -hmm. So they take every piece of history. That was, what, that was, that was Bass Reeves? Or was somebody else the Lone Ranger? It could have been Bass like Reeves. That. Okay, It yeah. could have been. You might yeah. be right. And so they take everything and replace them. I mean, the fact that they call themselves American when Native Indians and Hispanics and Taino Indians was already here, you know, they always replace it. Mm -hmm. So to bring it back, Putin bringing that information out is good for us because now when we say it, we could tell them black people that think we dumb, we could say, look, the white man said it too, mm -hmm. which be sad that you got to go that route. Yeah. They, they ice cold, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's the cold part, so. What if Putin just did that to start some shit? You feel me? That's since the sixties. But well, white people was white people was breaking down about that shit. They've been trying to tell us something the whole time, but they ain't been translating shit right. Who Putin? Yeah. Why that nigga know? What if he was over there like black people? This ain't got shit to do with y'all. <laughs> they been that's talking just shit the... since the nineties, bro. <laughs> <laughs> when you see Russia, get out the way, bro. <laughs> this ain't got shit to do with y'all. But they are translated different. He had low key been trying to be like we 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 wasn't with all that shit. <laughs> we wasn't oh, with all that shit. Putin ain't no bitch either. Though. He ain't bullshit. Yeah, Putin wild, yeah. but all that shit be a play. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that shit a stage. Mm -hmm. All of us a play. I don't know, bro. This shit got me nervous, bro. That everybody stop using this American currency lately. Mm -hmm. like that's the, the oil money shit. Up that's again. the oil shit, right? Yeah, that's making me nervous, bro. I can't believe motherfuckers went for it that long. How you going to tell me I got to trade the shit in y'all money and I'm getting it out the ground in my country? Mm. Them motherfuckers have got smart. They should have been stopped doing that yeah, shit. Right. How the fuck are you forcing this dollar on me over here? This ain't even. So exchange all that shit, man. Yeah, that Russian shit is a wake-up call because they in a spot where really no enemy of America has ever been. What enemy has ever been this close to America? Even with Pearl Harbor, they had to fly the plane from Japan to mm -hmm. Hawaii. Hawaii, and that ain't but close now, to here. Russia got boats in Cuban uh, territory. That's a close. And a car was telling me they just flew planes by Florida. It's Russian planes by Florida. Oh shit! Hell yeah! And they added the draft. the draft. They put the draft. Yeah. Listen, y'all. Yep. Listen, man. You know we got a phrase for the white man. I ain't gonna say it on here. I'm be nice. But when they incorporate that auto draft. 
That's not a coincidence because you got the boats. What is it? Uh, oh, they, he says it. Crackers. No, no, I'm gonna say. Oh, you want me to say I'm what saying. it is? Yes. Oh, uh, he want me. I'll say what it is. <laughs> no, you. It, 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 it ain't bad. We just say we just say the white man is a devil. Oh, you okay. deceiver. Okay. Yes. It just means deceiver. It's not the kind of take. Oh, they done heard that. Yeah, they know. Uh, like they it's know. not. <laughs> oh, okay. They know. Okay, no sweat. They know. I ain't know. No, I, I ain't, you know, you got to check the temperature. So, you know, you know, money. You know, money. I go off. You know. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm just making sure I don't go too far. Yeah. But that's a wake up call. Like that auto draft. And with the auto draft, for those that don't know, it just means that normally you would have to fill out the form to be oh, available yeah. for the draft. Now there ain't no form to fill out. Now you just in the draft. So when they need you, you see that Army government or U.S. Navy, whatever on your caller ID, don't answer the phone. That's what you don't Shit, want I'm to do. They gonna show up. And that's on purpose because Russia's so damn close, <laughs> they're going to need people to fight. Even them immigrants, watch when they when you see them give the migrants the green cards, just know it's coming with the draft too, so that they can have more bodies. To I'll fight. say my Mexican brother better not be helping the Russian niggas, man. I ain't nah. like, how I do it? Well, I don't think they gonna be helping. They gonna be helping me. And for us, mm -hmm. we've been talking about this since the sixties, like I said about like World War Three and stuff like that. All of that is like in the Bible. Like that's my background, the Bible. So when you read the Bible, you read about World War One and World War Two in the Bible, and it talks about World War Three coming. Like when Russia fell, Russia fell in like the 60s. They had what they called Cold War, Russia fell. USA. Nobody said that Russia could come back. And we was teaching that Russia was coming back. And now you look at Russia. Russia right there. And Putin don't care at all. He don't give a fuck. That was he don't get right. He don't care he at don't all. Care. And he want to punish because he wants, like, Black people don't think what to dominate. White people think they want to dominate. And Russia wants to be the world power. Yeah. Like America's been the world power since damn near since they've been incorporated, especially after World War II. And Russia wants that power. And if Russia will bomb their own people, the Ukrainians, imagine they, what they'll do to us. Yeah, they're going to try to fuck us. But don't y'all side with them Russians, man. That's a play. Yeah. When the Russians been doing that since like the 60s, when they had the communists, they would call black people communists, like Martin Luther King and stuff like that. They would call them communists because the Russians think uh, infiltrate. So the way they infiltrate is they'll take black people that they know don't trust the government and stuff like that, and they'll say, we'll fund you. We'll give you this. We'll do that. And then you think this white guy is a good white guy because he's funding you to do this. Now realize that once he get what he want, you're going to be in subjection unto him like you was under this regime. Yeah. We got to just what we should do. Like with the Israeli-Palestinian war, like just watch, get your popcorn and just watch them Sit do back, what they right. do unto each other. Don't involve yourself. Like you ain't got to be a part of that. Like I, and while they while they fighting each other, if we really had the spirit of Christ, we would say, let's come together and pull our resources together. Let's do our thing together so that as their kingdom is falling, now our kingdom could rise. Right. You know what I mean? Imagine if we put them differences aside, the blood of Crip, put all that aside as we see them warring. Because we don't gain nothing by being at war with each other. What do we gain? There's nothing you can win by taking a block. All you got is that block, but you're still reporting to that government. Now imagine if we thought a little bigger than that. So that's what we should take from what we're saying with Russia. So. Shit, I don't know what else can come after that. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. What do you think about Moscow? <laughs> Ukraine? <laughs> Stupid. Now I'm trying to figure out who the fuck is Mozart really? <laughs> yeah, a lot of them, man, they take your history, man. What is it, Beethoven? Beethoven? Beethoven, I heard Beethoven that's your brother. All right, yeah, all right. of them is niggas, man. Can't nobody make no music like that. I know that. that's a nigga, because that's Zaytoven, great, great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, the history repeats itself. Zaytoven, oh. Zaytoven. Zaytoven, fuck these niggas up. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Most certainly. Bay Diggy. <laughs> what crazy, man. Beethoven on the track. Hell yeah. Oh, his story deep. I heard Beethoven had like slits in his fingers to make his. Is that true? He had slits in his hands. No, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, they he tried play to... better. What well, they said so he could reach further on, uh, on the keyboard. On the keyboard? Yeah. But what made most sense is he was a nigga with big hands. Yeah. 
Because sometimes we be having big, big hands. hands. Like, maybe it was like Kawhi Leonard. That's what I'm saying. And then they Kawhi trying Leonard to be like, how can he reach that? Because his hand's bigger than a... Yeah. You know, they'll make us... You know he cut his finger. How your fingers gonna work <laughs> if you didn't cut the shit? <laughs> Yeah, people just be making up shit, man. Boy, hey, to try to explain it. That's, that's how great Beethoven was. They got to make those myths to explain his ability. Yeah, when you good at things. some shit and they can't figure out why, they just start making up shit. Yep. For like 60 years, Michael Jordan will literally have fly through the court. You mm -hmm. know, they call him Air Jordan. Yeah, oh, yeah. he's gonna. They're gonna say, you know, he was flying. Yeah, right. Now that's the first nigga that flew in the NBA. Right, right. Well, you know they cut some of the back of his heel off so he yeah. jump. They gonna start so you know making he up wings shit. on the back yeah. of his foot. Where his barn and that heel they cut so he could bend it back and then take off. Two slits in the Achilles. Yeah. He had six toes on each foot. Yeah, two phalanges. Running like that. <laughs> People just make up shit. Facts. They don't need no type of evidence. That's facts. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine the type of shit they're gonna say about me in a hundred years. You know, he ain't go to bed. He just stayed up all night writing. That's why he had me making up shit. They don't Nigga, know. that's true. You just don't be writing. <laughs> I be writing, man. <laughs> Nigga stayed up sick much straight. I done took calligraphy and everything. Nigga be watching Do It Yourself video. <laughs> Learned how to rebuild a basement. That's that DIY. That's, yeah. that shit there. Yeah. I do that. I do, I do DIY. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, I got a business. So I got a uh, a body butter business. I sell. It's yeah, come body butter. Yeah, come on. Yeah, hey, hey. Put I got them in the bag. Let's do it. Put them on. Hey, just bring me the body. Bag. Yeah, you can bring the bag. Can you bring the bag over? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I already got mine. But what you got in there? You see it? Let me get my security to search this bag. You got some shit in there? Y'all stay on. Security to search this bag. Nah, y'all stay. Can I bring the bag over? Yeah, y'all stay. Don't make me bring that goddamn bag out. Hey, man, this nigga brought the bag over. Aw, shit. Hey, man. Bag. This nigga brought the bag over. Man, y'all crazy as hell, man. So yeah, so this is my business. I sell body butters for men and women. Come on, man. So like, this is called God Tier. This is like black open. I make all these myself. Nice. So when you were talking about the shea butter, I was going to say something about it. And I actually bought them for y'all. Oh, word? So, oh, yeah, yeah, I bought them for uh, men and women. Thank you, bro. We use this in my house. Yeah, this you, you won't find it. nothing better. My girl going to use it, too, so it's going to go. Yeah, yeah I got some problem, for the girls, man. too. Yeah. yeah. I got uh, the ones called gas. Oh, yeah. I got two of them. One called oh, yeah. gas for men, one called gas for women. OK. So when you put this shit on, you be like, don't call me a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> That's just Do you even know what the word nigga means? Yeah, you see how soft that is? And you can't get that scent nowhere else because I make every scent myself. <laughs> so I'm on like Amazon, Etsy, and stuff like that. So I DIY. Yeah, I, it. Yeah, I do all that. Oh, wait, I, I think I got some oils too. Now, man. Um, yeah, I see it right there. Yeah, um, yeah that's the gas oil. Um, so if you got your wives or your, or your girls, or your, I, we call wives ribs because we have uh, more than one wife. Oh, right. shit. Yeah. How'd that work? That sounds very stressful. <laughs> nah, it ain't stressful, man. You know, I like... Yeah, that's what I was... It's like uh, being a coach. You know, like, you know, for coaching the team. That's stressful. Nah. <laughs> you yelling with a Damn it, run the play! God damn it, man! <laughs> <laughs> Is this what we're doing here? Is this what we're doing here? Hey, hey, you practice like you play. You practice like you play! <laughs> <laughs> Sit your ass down, you don't want to play. I see you got it. <laughs> what you doing? You, you Venus. She's Serena. <laughs> Serena Venus. Don't fuck that up. <laughs> nah, you, you know, you just got to tell them the truth from the gate. You got to, yeah, don't lie to them. And you'll find that most women will walk into it. If they could walk into it willingly, they'll do it. Oh. Dead ass. Okay. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> I, I just don't yeah. see how that would work, will you? What do yeah. you mean? <laughs> tell them the truth. Okay, so how? Yeah, tell They me. just got to accept the truth. Some women yeah. don't accept it. Yeah, they don't accept it. Right so okay. Some women yeah. ain't. Hold on. Yeah, that was good as hell. Yeah, that was yeah. so yeah. good. Jack, you gotta tell me more hey, about uh, this. Just we gotta put some of this on the show now. That shit, that, you know what I'm saying? It smell good, my boy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you be out, you tell women the truth. Right. That's okay. the best solution. But I'm gonna tell give give y'all a drink. If you gotta lie to your woman about having another woman or lie to the woman that you're trying to get that you got other women, 
You afraid of a woman? Yeah, count me out. Mm. I'm scared as a motherfucker then, cause I be, <laughs> you I be trying, man. They don't, man, look, I can't, man. I Hey, what's up, it's your man Carlos Miller. Listen up, renters. Do you ever feel like you're stuck in the loop of rent payments just watching your money vanish into thin air? It's time to turn the rent game around and start earning some serious rewards. That's where Built Rewards comes in. Bill's got the inside scoop on turning your rent into a legit investment in your home ownership journey. Built is breaking ground as the first rewards program that hooks you up to points on your rent. Even if you're still rocking the old school rent check vibes, Built Rewards has got your back. They'll mail in the check for you. It's like having a professional rent paying assistant. Every month, just pay your rent. Watch the bill points roll in. Pay rent, hassle free through Built Rewards app. Your rent game just got a major upgrade. Built points have been consistently ranked the highest value point currency by the points guy and bank rate. Earn points by paying rent right now when you go to joinbuilt.com forward slash 85 south. That's joinbilt.com slash 85 south. Make sure you use our URL so they know that we sent you. Listen, man, our next sponsor needs no introduction because you know we got the OG Bluetooth ads over here. So you can go to bluechew.com, go get you some, so you can make a rump a pom pom uh, with your little lady fron fron. Yeah, that's right. I'm telling you. All you got to do is go to bluechew.com forward slash 85 South. So you promo code 85 South, and you know they're going to give you a month free for new subscribers only. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. You know, hit the website and make sure you read all the safety precautions and all of that. But once you get your blue chew, I'm telling you. You're going to be walking around the house like bluechew.com. I went and got me some, and I done made love. You'll be making love. I'm talking about making sweet love. Sweet, sweet love. I'm telling you, man, Blue Chew wants you to chew it and do it and do it again and keep doing it until you fall asleep. Yes, sir. Bluechew.com. Four slash 85 South. Promo code 85 South. So they'll know that I sent you because I've been telling you to do this for a little minute now. Go do it. I be trying. You living man. in fear. Uh, yeah, <laughs> man, you gotta get I'm out of this. Yeah, you gotta get out of there. Right yeah. Yeah. Just try it. The, the next woman, just try telling them. I've the been truth. trying it. I'm gonna tell you what happened. Like, even if they don't want to, because you told them up front, their curiosity is gonna make them wonder why you had the heart to do it. Well, give me an example of True. telling the truth. So you meet a sister. So the first thing we say to a woman is, are they single? Because we don't talk to women that have other men. Well, you don't talk to no women then. They all nah, got they, other men. Nah, nah, they something. <laughs> he said he married. He got different. I'm going to give you an example. Why? What's, why the brother, uh, what's the brother Chico that y'all have on the show? Chico? Chico right. Man, I was impressed by that brother. When he was on The Breakfast Club and he was talking... What's the girl? What's Angela the Lee? No, 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 not Angela Lee, not her. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, hilarious. Yes, yes. Just hilarious. And he told the story of how Jess Hilarious was trying to get with him. But because he knew Jess Hilarious had a man, he wouldn't get with her. That's us. Yeah. And he made an excellent point. Like, in the hood, brothers are extremely possessive mm -hmm. of their women. And if you ask a woman if she's single and she say no and she got a man, you showing love to a brother you don't even see because you leaving that woman alone, and that's power. Yeah, I don't, I don't you know what I mean? It's like Chico me. should be applauded for not dealing Man, Carlos Miller just here to let you know that we are expanding the merchandise department. Look at this. Check out these pastel colors that we got. You feel me? What's that, light purple? What's that, like? It's a boy blue. What's this right here? This, like, oh, you think you cute? You just think you cute with this shit on, don't you? Look, that's right. That's 85 South. Make sure you go hit the website at 85apparelco.com. And I'm telling you, we taking over, bro. I think the ladies is going to really enjoy these right here. And I'm talking about for all the hustlers out there, that's if you're still living, grab you something that say 85 South on it, bro. I'm talking about a t-shirt. I'm talking about a hat. I'm talking about some socks. I'm talking about a something. It ain't nothing to it. Hit the website. It's right here. You see where my fingers point? That's where the website go. Make sure you put the website right here. But look, go out there and support the 85 South show. Yeah. With her, and then she tried to say she she shitted on her uh, boyfriend. 
Like, you know, he wasn't even grimy like that. It wouldn't even happen like that. Like, she basically wanted to play herself to get Chico, mm -hmm. and Chico stood on business. Like, Chico should be applauded. So when we go to sisters, that's the first thing we say. And you damn near got to dumb it down and why you say they all got a man, because you got to be like, well, is you having sex with somebody? You got a side piece. You got to <clears throat> really narrow it down. And then you don't want to just accept what they say at face value. Exactly. So you still might talk to them, because as long as you don't have <laughs> sex with them, you're cool. Yeah, they be lying. And so... You tell them, they say, well, because the minute you ask a woman if they single, they say the same thing to you. Well, are you single? So I always say, no, nah, I got a few wives. That's what I say. Mm. And so they, so the first thing, they'll be like, well, how that work? How you going to ask if I'm single? And then I'll break down biblically and biologically. A woman is not meant to have multiple men at all. She's not meant that way. Where a man is. Common sense. Let's say if a woman has five husbands. And a man has five husbands. Excuse me. Oh, a man shit. has five oh, wives. My bad. My bad. Yeah, I know. Oh, my bad. My bad. So, so the man. I'm pulling it. This is too many. That's two niggas. That big guy right there. My bad. My bad. So the man has five wives. If those five husbands tell that woman that we want a child, Somebody got to wait five years. Somebody got to wait a long. You got to wait in line. Damn, because she can't be down. pregnant by all of them at one time. That's one hell of a ball. Well, I can get all five of my women pregnant in the same month yeah. if I wanted to. Damn. The same night. If they all ovulating, you just bang, 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 bang. bang. <clears throat> now, you got you be taking some blue chews or something out there to stay up, but you be bang, 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 bang like You don't need another color. You don't need a red. <laughs> <laughs> You don't need a velvet. So when you had that conversation with them, you just you just break it down. Now the only difference between us and like brothers in the world is you can't leave that woman once you have sex with her. Like you gotta stay with her forever. Yeah. Like that's your woman. Like, like, you say yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Once I lock in with uh, you know <laughs> two three um I don't plan on going nowhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta stay with them. Like, you told them yeah uh, forever. But you know what? You told them. Told them what? Nah, but from him. You, you didn't not, tell them. Hell not. I'm not scared no more. <laughs> Okay, you ain't scared. So next time I get asked, so tell him what. Call him. Call who? Tell him. Call what? What? <laughs> <laughs> now is the time. Now is the time. You know what? Hey, put that on his body. I got family. I got new old. Hey, put that on his body. I got some new old. He telling you to do it right first, now. Let me tell you about the old first. You up? I got some shit. I gotta say. <laughs> Hey, you stupid. I did meet somebody. I didn't have sex with her. Yeah, sex is a great responsibility, man. It is. You know what I mean? Like, we shouldn't have sex with women and just throw them away. You got to keep them. No, you can't. Right. Yeah. That's a tough pill for brothers to swallow. Because yeah. y'all like the women to believe the lie. Don't say y'all. Don't say y'all. It's general. I'm just saying, you can't put us in there with them. No, I'm putting myself in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, we all, I, I always say we, you know, we, us, you know. I see what you're saying. That way people can't say, why you talk about me? If I put myself in that category. Oh. I'm in there too. Yeah. I talk it's about tactical. we, yeah. Yeah, it's tactical. Damn. Yeah. Damn. I need to start small, though. I'm going to try with the ugly. You know, something a little light first. Oh. A little light. I'm you're small. Single. No, I'm not single. Yeah. You go try it with an ugly one. They're not ugly, but you know. <laughs> well, he remakes Yeah, I got to build my way up. Ugly, nah, but I ain't nah, going to nah. care what's going on. Exactly. I tell the truth them all day. I tell the truth all day long. <laughs> oh, that's why you want the ugly, so you can practice telling them the truth. Yeah, you don't care. I don't want, yeah, I ain't, you they don't care if they yeah, leave. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a spiritual connection. I really want to be honest. You're a pretty woman to listen to, man. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them. Just think you could dominate. We were meant to. Like, we the hunters. I feel like this war shit, that war pop off, it's gonna humble a lot of their ass. Out yeah, they're gonna be looking for a nigga then. They yeah, oh yeah. How many white? Oh, yeah, what is that? Them. You know, the Bible say that in Isaiah 4 and 1 it say, in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. That's what the Bible say. Yeah. yeah. Who talking they about say, me the other night? Take away <laughs> our reproach. We just wanna be called by your name. We'll take care of our own self. Just take away our reproach. Well, that, see, that'll make me nervous. Is it just a random seven, and do you get to pick this seven? Because <laughs> what if you don't like the three of them? Like, hey, I don't need all, all seven. <laughs> but now, nah, don't have them all together, though. You, you know, they hey, hey, God, can I change out the E4? I don't fuck with this. <laughs> so they got to be separate. 
Yeah, they're not married to each other. They so they got to be somewhere. So, so yeah, you don't, you know, like most people think like big love, where you got all the women in the same room. That's too much estrogen in the same house for me. Right. So I, my, like mine particularly, they separate. They're not together. They know it's not a lie. So they all know of each other. They know they share me like that. But you don't have to have them together. Yeah. Cause they're not married to each other. Right. You know what I mean? There ain't no law that say they got to get along with each other. They just got to know that they married you. Yeah, there ain't no law. So you can send one to the room. <laughs> Go to your room. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you want to act? <laughs> we talk about all. Don't disrespect me in front of my other wife. <laughs> you can't put a draw phone. You can talk about about to me in front of my wife. <laughs> like what? You know what? Go to time out. <laughs> um, See, that was the problem. Remember, I was talking to you. That's the problem I was running right, at. Right. So I done had women want to do it, but mm -hmm. the fact that the one of the women wasn't, you know, didn't like other women, that right. made a problem. So they're like, if we all can't do something, then I don't see yeah. the point. I'm like, bro, that ain't. Yeah, this ain't like, part of this. It's yeah. not about you know lesbianism or anything yeah, right, like right. that. Right, it's not about that. Uh, you live. So you can't have no threesomes and all that. No, yeah. I ain't none of that. No. You can't. Mm -mm. You funny. I didn't say. I, th <laughs> you heard how you say you can't. I heard. I heard how the ways. No, you can't do that. <laughs> Listen, I pick up on conversations. Good. No, yeah, you can't. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> Keep that separate. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Separated. Not you wasn't general. Are you right. Not general. No, I, I didn't. I'm not even thinking about that. Two right. wives is too much. That is too much for me. That's too. How many people. men you know got one woman? She's 98% of cap. It's cap. But also, dudes be lying, too. Hell yeah. They, they got a bunch of invisible women. You ain't never seen <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know like, you know the bitches that way. Where are you? There's one bitch come to pick you up, right? <laughs> yeah. No various bitches come get you. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Niggas don't be having various. <laughs> Not for real. <laughs> Nigga might have a little whoop to swoop or something. <laughs> a little whoop to do. It ain't, it ain't nothing major. Like, right, right, they, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. he, in, he in her rotation, too. <laughs> he just see her when she call him. Hell That's no. what bad place to be. I don't need, that, you can't even call that shit a real relationship if she won't pick you up from the airport. Mm. Right. Oh, well, I get picked up, so I'm straight then. I'm just yeah. saying, if oh, you yeah. don't have... Nobody that to pick you up from the airport. Oh, It'll really make you look yeah, at your yeah, whole roster. And really, if she's really like, your lady, you can't to leave. stop her from coming to get right. you. Mm -hmm. What time you get in? I'll be there. Yeah. Be at like the waiting station waiting for mm -hmm. you to show up. Yeah, that, I need that type of shit. If it ain't that type of serious, then fuck you then. Sure. Tell them you'll stay with them and mean it. I don't mean that shit. Yeah, see? <laughs> like, y'all y'all be like that song, uh, Reasons by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, that we hit. Yeah. yeah. You know what happened after the play the love game? Now the reasons disappear. Yeah. Right. Like, that's a song about a one night stand. Damn. Yep. When you think about the word, the reasons that we're here, the reasons, and when, at, when the part says, now that the love game has been played, all the reasons was just a charade. Yeah. And, and our love, love starts yeah. to fade. And the yeah. love start to fade, because I done tapped that ass. Now it's gone. Yeah. That's what we do now. But when you think about it, we teach women to believe our lie and then get mad when they believe the lie that you want to stay with them. Because it's our fault the women become hoes. Facts. If you tell a woman, if you game a woman to get in her drawers, and then when you get the drawers, you leave her, and she want to stay with you, why are you mad at her when she believed your lie? I wasn't lying. Bars. That's an yeah. SAT but no, ass question. Right that shit, that, that nigga that, do that a whole deep. thesis on I'm that. First of all, <laughs> the lie only lasted as long as the experience. <laughs> when you lie to her, you lie to yourself. Uh -huh. To shift the blame yeah. from a temporary lie. <laughs> The lie had already expired. Yeah. The rest of the lies from that point on, she told to herself. Yeah. <laughs> she lied to herself. She chose to keep lying. She was the lie was obviously a lie. Did it's I plant the seed of the lie? Yes, yes I, I did. did. Am I responsible for the fruit? Absolutely not. <laughs>
You got you forgetting the other part. She knew I wasn't shit. You got to add that part yeah. to it too. Yeah. She knew I was on. But that's where the fault come in because she right. really didn't. Thank you. Even if you weren't, maybe she saw. But we say that your potential. Maybe she saw through the whole game and was like, "You ain't not shit. You just pretending to not be mm -hmm. shit after the fact." And you know what? Some women, women hope. Women hope you're the one that mean what you say. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this ain't all women, because you got them feminist women think they don't okay, need a man. Okay, I was going to say, God damn, yeah, I know it ain't been me this whole time. Nah. <laughs> God damn, I know it ain't been nah, me this whole time. you got them feminist-ass women that, you know, is, I'm not talking about them, but you got some women that hope that you're the one. You know what I mean? They be going out to the club thinking this going to be the one to get them out of the club. Mm -hmm. And then you start telling them that. Yeah. So we, well, when our school, we put an end to that. When our school, we teach, if you lay with that woman, that's your wife. Now imagine if we had that thought process. Imagine if a woman or a man had the thought process, if they lay with this person, that's their husband or that's their wife. They would think twice about yeah. just laying with somebody just for the sake of laying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about it, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's good, man. <laughs> Next thing you know, you be calling them ribs and wives. You be like, shout out to Desire, I got these new ribs. <laughs> <laughs> got rib Might tips. be the rib cage. Rib tip. It's rib the rib tip. 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 Rib tip. <laughs> that like half a wife. <laughs> Two more. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> Fuck that. No, mm. that's a long time. That's a that's a lot. Cause you don't know how the fuck long you gonna be here. Right. You say everybody you lay with, you got to look at them like your wife. But the wives can't marry. Fifty years you from die. now, you, right? Yeah, once and you can't you know, remarry until she die. No, you can do whatever you want. Oh yeah, yeah, right. But yeah, she yeah, can't. But do she more can't do. Yeah. 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 Once you lay with that man, that's your man. Yeah. You can't lay with another one. That's extreme. You gotta die for her. It take fuck. three fucks to figure out if we like each other. I'm telling you. Nah, you know what it take to figure out if we like each other. I had to buy one of my wives. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Changed up the whole thing. It's program. actually reversed. It went from a real to a decap. <laughs> you a goddamn car, though. That's what you Because I got to fuck you at your house, my house, and sternum. somewhere else. I right, dare I'm trying to treat you like a real, but you're acting like a sternum in this motherfucker. <laughs> Listen, you act like an angle bone around here. Well, they you don't like stop acting like a collarbone. <laughs> you stop acting like a shoulder blade. No, nah, they try to act like the brain to be the head. Mm. Yeah, that'd be the problem, you know. That is the thing. Yeah, these women these days want to be the head. You can't yeah, be the head. Damn. Yeah, black woman is not a threat. So she can't be the head. That's bars too. Mm -hmm. Black man is the threat. That's why they take him from being the head. They put the black woman in charge because a woman being in charge of any society is not a threat to nobody. You show me a society run by women and you show me the threat that they are. And I'll show you all the societies by men and the threat that they are. Donald Trump is like one of the greatest male chauvinists that existed. You let America tell it. And more white women voted for him because they knew that they still needed him for protection, for guidance, for structure. Our black women would, are taught that they don't need a black man for protection, guidance, and structure. I don't know what the fuck they thought he was going to do. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump ain't for protection. Donald Trump is great for white people, man. Shit. Yeah, he turned the water off for him. Did he? Donald Trump was so great for white people, they stormed the White House. Oh, I'm telling you, that shit's unheard of. They thought he was great. Unheard of. No, but then no they thought. went to jail, and that nigga ain't come to get and nobody. That nigga made, listen, Trump, making <laughs> mo Trump made a gang of money after he got found guilty. Oh, he's still selling shit. They yeah. found all that shit he selling. And they still want him to be president. Think about that. Yeah, with the, with the case. A black man you know could be a criminal convicted of a crime and run for president, none. That's how much they love Trump, white men and white women, because that's protection. I knew that shit was different when they was about to tear this bitch up. Word is barn. They defecated on Nancy Pelosi. Often. They shit it. Yeah. They shit it all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> they did. That was part of it. Yeah. What kind of motherfucker get up and be like, man, I'm going to go down there and shit on that mama. I'm going to shit on something. <laughs> like that this is thing. I'm, I'm leaving shit on something. something. <laughs> I'm shitting on something. I'm leaving on I'm something. On the hood. <laughs> I'm shitting on something. Guys, don't forget we're doing chili dogs at 9 a.m. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, drink some of this bacon grease before we go in there, man. Come on. We got the bean cook off. <laughs>
We're gonna and make oh. sure you eat your beans. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna oh. show these motherfuckers. Motherfuckers be in line before they break in that bitch. Oh, they hurry up the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker be in charge. Hold your ass, Brian! <laughs> Hold your ass! We're what? going to shit the fridge! Clench your ass! They're going to smack it, baby! Made me choke. <laughs> Hold your ass. You know what we say, boys? Save some for the White House! <laughs> That's what they did, man. They shit on that White House. Was chilling on that White House. Ah. National Guard, nobody showed up. I'm gonna watch that shit tonight, bro. Yeah. My favorite part is when they walk past that white man, he's like, there's nothing in here, guys. We've been in here for hours. <laughs> <laughs> We're lost. Oh, white people been back. showing their ass in America, yeah. bro. You remember when they had the uh, riot at the Target? They oh, yeah. sprayed the white lady with yeah. the fire hydrant. Fire hydrant. She was trying white to stop did people. That? What yeah. happened? That uh, lady was stabbing people. Told me everything. I don't know who the white person that hit her with the with the fire hydrant, but yeah. Somebody she did. She was in a little wheelchair, right? <laughs> right. Run the motorized. Wait, 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 wait. They sprayed in the wheel. She was in the wheelchair. But she, they, she was doing a spraying or she got sprayed in the she wheelchair. She got sprayed. Right? In the wheelchair. Yeah. Because she, she was blocking the way. People were looting the target. She blocking the way. And they said she was stabbing people, like, don't leave. <laughs> and she was in one of them little shits, and they hit her with the shit. Like, this, get out of the way. They emptied a whole fire. Yeah. It's crazy. It's one of the craziest. It is crazy. I need that video. You get that video. Oh, we got, we got, somebody pull it up. Yeah, I need that. Somebody pull it up. As hell, we got to put it on this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Drop it on the episode. That lady was stabbing people. <laughs> uh, Greatest moments. Yeah. White people was looting, too. The white people are the greatest up. looters, man. They was looting. Right. They was looting. I don't know nothing they don't loot. They was looting. That's facts. They looted America. They, hey. Oh, oh man. God damn. They did the same What you think about it? The yeah, they looted Ludacris, all of America. <laughs> the, the real America. <laughs> Niggas looted. <laughs> on reservations and everything. Well, that's the world, lady. Ain't that how this, that's pretty much how they, they did everywhere. Yeah. They be looting. You know, that's a virus. Like, the white man's a virus. He don't go anywhere and the place gets better, it gets worse everywhere he go. Just think about every land he's went into and look at it. Look at it beforehand and look at it after him. Like, there was trees and plant life, the Cape Buffalo existed, and white man come over, you ain't got none of that now. You go look at them African countries, do the same thing. And I ain't really a big fan of Africans, but you know, you got them African countries do that. You don't fuck with the Africa? Hell no. The whole continent? The whole continent. The whole continent don't fuck with us. The whole continent? The whole continent don't fuck with us. What about them? What about we? Ethiopians be having the little parking Ethiopians is like the racist motherfuckers. Excuse me, I don't like. know. They like the most racist bastards on the planet. <laughs> the black people. I love how you change them from motherfuckers to bad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was gonna get better, man. It's about to say <laughs> Excuse me, like baby. <laughs> <laughs> you don't fuck with Ghana. Uh-uh. Okay. Nah. The whole no. Nigerian like the greatest scammers to ever exist on the planet, man. Now that, now that I seen Nigeria firsthand. Is a I have Stop. seen that now. Hey, y'all, what's, what's that African girl said she got hit by a brick? That was a lie from the gate. Oh yeah. I know you Talk know. about she was yeah. at the club, somebody. Nobody did nothing. You got hit with a brick. Now she and your hair and was was in your head. Yeah. Bitch, you I, listen, I've seen people get hit with the bricks in the hood. What happened? You got scratches, blood, what happened? bleed. Yeah, 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 she was just swollen. Up. Up. Your shit is bust. She was just swollen. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Your shit is bust. Yeah, yeah. Get hit with a brick. Yeah. It wasn't no that wasn't. A that. brick ain't round. You understand? Like, you got hit with something that was. Like she ate something, Benadryl would have helped her. I think she got charged for that. She yes, did. She, she got charged for that because she was scamming. Sat that GoFundMe. Hell yeah. I think GoFundMe. I think they said she did a couple times. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. Was doing she got hit again. Nigeria was scamming the hell out of you know they call, can't blame the whole country. You no, know, with black people they call us akatas, they call us lazy, they got all type of terminologies. Man, I don't rock with Africa, man, at all. Man. We not African at all. So we we a different. Melanated people to help people out. Mm. Like people think because we got the same skin tone, we the same people. But if I ask them if we're Arabs, they're gonna say no, they got brown skin. 
If I ask if we're East Indians, they're going to say, no, we got brown skin. Your skin tone doesn't make you the same people. Black is a byword. You know, we Israelites by ethnicity. So even the term nigga that, you know, is looked at as derogatory, that's in the Bible. When they were describing the Israelites, they called them niger, which is where the root word of nigger comes from, which just means black. So they were just calling the Israelites black. So like when we say nigga, we mean it in that context. We don't mean it in a derogatory context. So there was always a difference between us and Africans and whites and J Japanese, et cetera. Like nigga got to be capitalized. What do you mean? The word nigga got to be capitalized every time it's used. Mm. I come to that conclusion by myself. Didn't nobody help me. Mm. <laughs> I, just, I feel like it's just supposed to be capitalized. What about them white people that spell it with a K? Spell it with a what? With a K? Yeah. What do you mean? With Nike? K N I. Okay, and okay, I get what you're saying. I I've never, never seen, seen that, like that. Yeah. I've seen them. Try they usually say like wigger. They try to. I remember I had a white guy say wigger. Yeah. They don't say that shit to me either. That's a white nigga. That's what they think, right? You that's can't what, say that to me because it's like you really saying nigga to me, but putting a W in front like I'm supposed to be feels like like you. You can't to give just you change the letter. Yeah, I say don't say that shit to me either. Yeah, but they got about a hundred variations of the shit that they saying now. Mm -hmm. That's even worse than that. Mm -hmm. You don't even know what they. You see that TikTok? What y'all think about that TikTok? That was like the white girl. That's nigga, the white girl. Oh yeah, so that was a nigga out there with them pissed off. She yeah, she fucking. But then when she like made that up. second video, she was like, I did the research. And I still don't care. The research is crazy. When she said she was, she made a second video and she was like, um, you know, after all the backlash and messages from people of that race I was talking about, I did the research and after doing the research and study, I still could care less. Is what she said after that. She ain't do no research. It's hell don't nobody do no research. research she said me. all of that to dumb. Excuse me to uh, go further and stand even more down yeah. on saying broke ass. Niggas. Yeah. Lost I think job. she knew exactly what would happen if she did. Yeah, I think nigga. she got it. She fucking the nigga, I feel like. <laughs> that what I feel. Nigga done took, stole your car for two, three days. You know, had took some money from you that you ain't get back. Now you just well, she did right. say her friends were broke ass, ass niggas. niggas. So yeah. what, what is her friend? That's that what it is. And then she didn't, it was an AS on the internet. It wasn't no ER. That white woman got a black dude on. Yeah. Where was she from? I'm going to tell you what, the white people getting yeah. slick, though. They saying it with the AS so they can say, well, I didn't say it with the ER. Oh, OK. They can't say it with the AS or the ER. I don't think she gave a fuck. She no, said I exactly said nigga. Yeah. They, <laughs> like, what, who came up with that's a different, like, it's different if you say it with the ER or the AS. Like, who came up with the, with the who originated that? Yeah, that, that, that AS mode slave master. Nigga. Yeah. No, that, like, I don't know who nigga. came up with that with concept. A. Like, who came that's up word. with that? That's word. I don't know who came with that. And you see she attacked Uzi Vert. Yeah, for wearing a dress as she said. Yeah, she said, how y'all... I wasn't mad said, about that. <laughs> she, said, she said, how y'all get mad at me and not mad at this nigga? Because he had the whole dress and stuff like that on. That's, That's what the white girl said? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be honest, yeah, too. It was tough for me to have a, a strong opinion on that. Like, I struggled with that. Cause Uzi Vert in the dress and shit like that, so it's like you made it hard on how am I, how am I, I, I yeah, how, how am I, how am I defend yeah. this one? Yeah, I can't back you up on but this. But then, I, but then I'm gonna tell you, I had a, I had a good, I had a good comeback though. Damn, I had a good comeback though. So my only comeback was, um, she used that as a play. So because she know straight black man is gonna have an issue with a man wearing a dress. Mm -hmm. So she says, okay, I'm gonna be able to call him a nigga because the nigga's gonna be mad at him because he's gay, which, right. you know, well, he appears to be. I don't know if he's actually gay or not, but the dress, <laughs> but the dress definitely says you're gay if you put the dress on. So now, she was calling us niggas before she ever saw Uzi Vert in a dress, though. Yeah. So. I doubt that. She probably hasn't seen that nigga in a dress before. Yes, yeah, 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 so her her bringing up the Uzi Vert part was just another reason to say niggas. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? So you he ain't got to say it anymore. Anyway. Uzi Vert, yeah, because Uzi Vert was wilding with that. He was going to say that shit anyway. That's what I'm, right, that's what I'm saying. Uzi Vert was just a prop. For us to be mm -hmm. emotional about seeing Uzi Vert in a dress and then excusing her behavior. I so think it's it almost, was done for a, a reason, too. Bust it down. She been watching how people act on the internet. Who's saying what? Paying attention to the exactly. social. It clickbait. What's yeah, the clickbait? Yeah, what gets you on fire? Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, you know, These you can always use it in word. Like, mm -hmm. what are they responding to? She got the, she know, the, she on code with some white people. She, Hell yeah. She know who, she got some. some there's a place to go. They right. Like, trying like to if she get fired for saying that shit, she did. there's a place to go what for her. she working at? She in know the internet, make money off Where motherfuckers is going to support her. Right. Because we know anytime. They do some shit and they, and they come family. down. All they gotta do is do that, and yeah, motherfuckers yeah. is gonna donate the you know, money if you go. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Man, yeah, she yeah. Where did she land? She landed on a nice pillow. Yeah, there you go. It wasn't no hard time. Yeah. Yeah. Black, black man had a white woman. He was smart. Look, get on TikTok, call them niggas, niggas. Go get beat up by the black community. We gonna start a GoFundMe. We gonna get this paid. We gonna get paid. You ain't even gotta get beat up. The no, racist motherfuckers gonna to support take, you anyway. You just gotta hit you in the comments. <clears throat> That's like, enough for them. Go find me. Yeah. yeah. Now you gotta create the outrage so you can be like, they bullying me on mm -hmm. social media. Yeah. Why is being a threat? I lost my job. That's job. where the money comes. Yeah. And that's what she did. She then showed they me. tried to right. kill my she dog. At the park. <laughs> bling, 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 bling. Yeah, don't let him be at the park like you said. Just because I said something doesn't mean my life deserves to be destroyed. Then she gonna go on podcasts for two years. Crying and shit. Fuck around and oh, end up on Fox News. Fuck around and get the book deal. Oh, she get on Fox. That so you shit know Fox the, is perfect for that. Parlay that shit the in the eight or ten million dollars. Marianne Whitworth's newest book. Broke ass, ass niggas. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to a story. I need to do a story about my experience <laughs> in saying broke ass niggas. Netflix make a documentary about this shit, then bust it down and do a whole twelve episode series with two seasons. Bam. With Mary Ann Wentworth. And then the parentheses, <laughs> broke ass nigga. <laughs> then the sex tape coming on Vivid. Oh. Niggas that old With Ray J. That sex tape is crazy, man. <laughs> they got a whole plan laid out for 10 years after they do and shit. And she got like a black boy for the whole time. That don't come Not out until he's 15 and he want to tell his side of the story. 15 is crazy. Mm. Uh, Hypothetically speaking. Yeah, it's, that's all hypothetical. <laughs> as far as I as UPK go, man, like the whole Israelite camp, mm -hmm. for the people who don't know, who just feel like y'all just some people who stand out there. Cause I, you know, I done been with people not light up when I see my brothers out there. I'm like, man, hey, man, right. that them niggas who be yelling at everybody talking. Can you really break down and explain what what ISUPK stands for. Like, why y'all on the corner doing this? You know what I'm saying? Why y'all so aggressive with it? Or, mm -hmm. You know, why y'all handle things the way that y'all handle it? Just so Definitely. I think, um, so ISUPK stands for Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge. Our leader is Commander Jenny Hanna. He's in charge of that organization. And so it was established based on um, the original founding members uh, reading the Bible, which we all had in the house. And as they're reading the Bible, they're reading scriptures in the Bible. And as they're reading, there's a scripture, Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the greatest problem, excuse me, one of the greatest questions or enigmas is, what is black people's identity? Like, when you ask black people who they are, usually it's their religion that they identify by. They'll say, well, I'm Christian, I'm Muslim, I'm Methodist, I'm Baptist. When that's not really your ethnicity, when you ask white people, they'll say, I'm Irish or I'm from Scotland or something like that. So as they're reading the Bible, they're reading verses that will say, you would be brought into Egypt again with ships, which is slavery. And so now we get an inkling of, or, or, or earmark of, how did we get over here? We came over here on cargo slave ships. Then as we start reading more of the Bible, we see that the Israelites, Israelites was black. In Song of Solomon 1 and 5, it says, I am black but comely, which is mean I am black but beautiful. So now King Solomon is calling himself black. That's us. So as we start, I, I broke down Acts 13 and 1 with the word nigger or niger, which means black, which is what they call us today. So all these different identifying marks, we start taking this information and then going out into the street. And when you're out into the street, and if you see the oppression of black people, if you're not angry about it, some, I, I'll be feeling like there's something wrong with you. Like if we see all the broken homes, if we see what drugs has done, what gangs has done, what abortions has done, now with what the community has done, there has to be somebody that can get, deliver information that heals this nation. And so when you see us out there aggressive, another scripture says oppression makes a wise man mad. So now we take this wisdom that we got within the Bible and now we got to go out and teach on the street corner. So like y'all see in this environment, y'all don't see me yelling at y'all. It's not necessary for me to yell or project my voice 
because we're in a room having a conversation. When we're on the street corners, Isaiah 58 and 1 says, cry aloud, spare not, meaning you have to point out our people, our condition, our identity, how we get out of it. So when people say you're yelling, they're not wrong for saying that we're yelling, but we have to project that voice out so we can tell people this is who we are. Our disobedience to God is why we're in that condition that we're in. Like if God is our father and all of us believe in God, Christ said, our father which art in heaven. So if God is your father, your father gave you laws you're supposed to live by. And your father told you, if you live by these laws, I will give the best to you. I will put you on top. You will be above all nations. But if you disobey these laws, you'll be punished for disobeying your father. And blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, we have disobeyed our father, and we're seeing the punishment. And it's just now, as simple as I'm saying it, the ramifications make it not that simple. But if we were to be obedient to the father that we love, we would then be blessed and we wouldn't be in this condition. So that's why we have to speak in the fashion that we have to speak. And then people come and challenge us because the Bible is something that, you know, a lot of cats think like if you believe in the Bible, you soft. A lot of cats think it's a white man's book. A lot of cats think a lot of things about the Bible. So now sometimes people come up against us at the camp. We call it a camp when we out there speaking. So now you got cats that have come up in there and say, your Bible is trash. We should be following this. We should be following that. And so we built for the battle. Like, we don't mind. If you want to come and battle with information, that's what I do. I'm known for that. Like, if you was to search me on YouTube, yes, you would see that I've battled since 2013 and whooped everybody ass. Mm. Facts. Like, if this was battle rap, I would be like, Sue Surf, like Loaded Lux or something like that. Like facts. And so now, and now why you got to do that? Because if they can beat you on the Bible, then everything that we stand for is trash. But if I can beat you on your information, then everything that you stand for is trash. Now, if he was to beat me, I would follow him. If he could tell me that not believing in the Bible, we should believe in this, and this is our identity, this is our right way, I would follow that. But if we can dominate then we win. So now when we go out on the street corners, that's why we're aggressive. That's why we're loud. The reason why it comes across as an offense, because they're used to a docile black man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The black man is, listen, Martin Luther King was like a sissy. Now a lot of people gonna get offended by that. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 I'm, but let me tell you what I mean. Not a sissy in a sense, let me, let me, let me get it out. <laughs> Not a sissy in the, in the sense of being able to organize men together. That takes courage. Mm -hmm. Not a sissy in, in the sense of marching on Washington. That takes courage. But the message he was sending sissy fighters. The message was don't fight. The message was be nonviolent. When every race, every man or every human has a right to defend themselves, and you do not want to send a message that if we get harmed by our people, we supposed to forgive them right away. If there was reciprocity in the forgiveness, then maybe I could understand. But there's never been reciprocity. And Martin Luther King said a statement. He said, what I'm doing is leading us into a burning building. So if Martin Luther King says he's leading us into a burning house, you don't go into a burning house to live. You go into a burning house to die, it's fire, the gas, all of that is going to kill you. So even he knew his message was wrong. But since that time, if you go out there and call out um, these governments or these enemies for things that they do and you do it aggressively, you know what they say? You got to do it like Martin Luther King. He was all about love. He was all about peace. But when them towers fell, and they killed. think about examples. So like when them towers fell 9-11, right, like 3,000 people died. Right? 3,000 Americans, something like that, died. And in the name of that, the white military went over to Palestine and Afghanistan and slaughtered millions of people that had nothing to do right. with 9-11. You know why? Because American lives matter that much. And when they finally so-called killed Osama bin Laden, you know what America said? I can finally sleep. You know who's not been allowed to get relief from their oppressor is us. Even Jewish people, when that Holocaust was over, they said, man, we can't leave them Jewish people in Germany. We got to take them out of Germany. They cannot be around the people that was oppressing them. 
And they divided Palestine in half, put a people there that was not those people so they could relieve, be relieved of what they went through. What do we get when they so-called freed us from slavery? They call sharecroppers, but now you get to just farm the land that you was already a slave on and not even get the benefit of it. And then when we did build stuff, the, be the best time for black people was segregation. Because during segregation is when we built all them cities y'all talk about. Black Wall Street, Paradise in uh, Detroit. Mm -hmm. You got Seneca Village in New York. You got cities in D.C. All that is built at a time when Jim Crow was enacted, 13th Amendment is enacted. All of these things are enacted at a time where you think we should fall. But we rise up, and that's the greatest threat to America, that in 40 years removed from slavery, we building the greatest thing within their empire. And that, that's what makes us a threat, because now they don't have the cattle that they once had, because that's what we are. We're cattle. We, we pull the plow of America. You know how they say America runs on Duncan? America runs on niggas. We build everything and we do everything. Our financial money runs this place. We don't never get paid and say, after we pay our bills, we don't never say, let me support these black businesses. Let me build up this black economy. That's why Atlanta is special. Like y'all special right now because y'all got all these black people coming down here, these black entertainers and stuff like that coming down here to resurrect something that we ain't really seen since um, segregation. And that's a threat. So now what do they got to do? They got to convince some uppity rich leaders to say integration is better. So then we go through integrating schools. When you integrate the school, now we don't get black education no more. You get their education. It used to be math is universal. Math is like the one new thing that's universal. But now we don't learn our history. We don't learn our English. We don't learn a job. Samuel Jackson did this video where he said in his community, they went to school based on what was going to be their trade. And they would know the teacher, they would know the principal, they would know X, Y, Z. When Brown versus Board of Education came out and they integrated the schools, now you don't learn black education. There's nothing that nobody that caters to you. That Negro League, you know, we was talking about Satchel Page and Josh Gibson. The Negro League is another thing. The Negro League was the greatest thing. If you think about a baseball team, what's Atlanta Braves down here, mm -hmm. right? So Atlanta Braves, if you go to a Braves game, right, you're going to get hungry, so you're buying the food there. Those are vendors that you're buying from. You're buying the drinks there. That's another vendor you're buying from. You're buying it, the Braves jerseys, the memorabilia. That's another vendor you're buying from. So imagine them St. Louis Monarchs. When you go to the St. Louis Monarchs and see them play, when you get hungry, you patronize in a black business. When you drink, Mr. Earl you know, Ribs, now. Ain't nothing like a Mr. Earl. There you Earl. go. The Earl Ribs, and Earl Rib is famous. Got the best sandwich on the planet. <laughs> But then you got Jackie Robinson who said, I don't want to hit the black baseball. I want to hit the white baseball. Right. And when you look up, um, R.A. Dickey, who was the owner of the Brooklyn Dodgers, said specifically that he was going to use integration to destroy the Negro League because he said if we fought them on taking the best players, he would say, didn't you want to get integrated? Right. And you know how it was about destroying the Negro Leagues? When the ABA merged with the NBA. They kept ABA teams. Yeah. They didn't get rid of all the ABA teams. Yeah, they, they kept, kept about five of them. The Negro League, all of them gone. Yeah. Because it's about destroying our infrastructure. And so now we're totally dependent on America. Right. There's nothing. So Israelites, we upset about that. So we're not upset from like an emotional standpoint where if I see a white guy or African guy, I'm cussing them out or I can't open the door or do business. My business is body butter business. I work with Africans, whites, Arabs, all kind of people to get their product to make their business. So it's not like that. Mm -hmm. But we do point out the problems that they have and we don't give our love to them. We give our love to y'all. And so we go to all of the communities in Atlanta and North Carolina. We go to the, we go into a project in North Carolina next week, right? We going to this project in North Carolina that asked us to come back because we went to this. What's the name of the project, Akat? McDougal. McDougal Projects in North Carolina. We was in there in April. We did a food drive. They didn't even know we was coming. So we come there with food and clothes, bring them everything, and they contact us and ask us to come back. So they talk about the Israelites and we mad and angry. We are mad and angry because black families are destroyed. Communities are destroyed. And we wanted to get cleaned up. You know when they clean up a neighborhood? When white folk want to move in. 
when they want to destroy your neighborhood, like they always make it seem like the community is supposed to take care of the neighborhood. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. The commu it's not the community's job to police the neighborhood. It's the police job to police the neighborhood. That's what they're paid for. But when they want the community to go to trash, the police turn a blind eye to the drug dealers. The police turn a blind eye to the abuse. Until the quality of life in that area goes down enough to where the white people can come up there and buy Property up all cheap. the real estate, yeah. get it real cheap. And then now you know what all of a sudden? Police know how to police now. They know how to lock people up. They know how to arrest people. They know how to control the neighborhood. And so that's what we're angry about. And people need to hear that part. I'm glad you asked that question because people need to hear that part about what we're doing because all they do is put us on the thing and they saw they just yelling. They call it a white man a devil. They doing all of this as if the white man ain't deceiving. As if what this, if, if somebody could point out the lie that we say about white people, I'll stop saying it. <laughs> Dead ass. <clears throat> we went to court in uh, 2014 in Philadelphia, Liberty Place took us to court. <clears throat> they playing our videos, right? <laughs> so they playing our videos in court. It's a white woman, Jewish judge. They playing a the video. This brother is talking about all of this crap about white people, what he wanted to happen to them, reading the Bible and everything. And even in court, they said we was right for what we were saying because it was coming from the Bible. So it might seem like we angry, which we are, but there's nobody that's going to love black people greater than us because we'll give you identity and we'll give you brotherhood. That's what we'll give you. So. Appreciate the question. Yeah. yeah. And this is my man right here. Like, what I like, if I could, about Moneybag, Moneybag did this skit. So I was always following Moneybag just like I was following y'all. Moneybag, you did that skit about um, when the woman said, "What? how you know God is a woman? Yeah. I mean, a man, how you know God ain't a woman? Yeah. And that shit said, lost ass nigga. That yeah. shit was fucking yeah. funny as yeah. hell. Yeah. And you start, and you read, what, I, what impressed me was that you knew the scriptures. Yeah. Cause I'm not knowing that, you know, you as an Israelite, I'm just watching you as a comedian. Yeah. And so when you bust down and you bust the scripture, Exodus 15 and three, the Lord is a man of war. I contacted you yeah. and then, you know, you build connections just like that. And so that's how I, I linked up with him. And that's how you know being an Israelite because you never know who's watching. You never know who's listening. And you have to make sure you carry and conduct yourself in that fashion. Because if, if anybody saw me out here with a white woman, smoking weed, selling drugs, it'd be like, that shit, Captain, is all y'all talk about. That's trash. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I have to But if they saw me do it... <laughs> <laughs> It's different. Stand on business. <laughs> well, as an Israelite, I stand on the business. No, no, no. That's that's fine. So that's that just to answer the question. That's what we're about. Like we're about fixing the condition of uh, blacks and Hispanics and giving them identity first. Because an identity, when you say somebody, if you say you're an Israelite, or you, let's say if you say you um Chinese, right? If somebody finds out that they're Chinese, you're gonna go into well, what is the Chinese culture? They got what the hint the Buddha. Is it Buddha? So they got Buddha. So you know, you're going to look for this fat guy, which that's not even Buddha. That's just who Buddha worship, right? So you're going out looking for this fat guy. You're going into what they eat, what they celebrate. So now when you find out you're an Israelite, you're going to find out, okay, if I'm an Israelite, what do we celebrate? What do we eat? Who are we supposed to love? Who are we supposed to marry? Who are we supposed to, how are we supposed to live? How are we supposed to conduct ourselves? And it's all in that Bible. Your pastor told you God's law was done away with, which is insane to me because the only thing the law ain't done away with is that tie, that 10%. That's still, <clears> that's still that stand. Yeah. yeah, but you can do whatever you want. What father, what God that you serve would ever say that you don't have to do what I told you to do? Even us as parents would never tell our children, you don't have to do what I say. But for some reason, the church teach you that God don't care what you do. Just repent, you be all right. Yeah. Say, say, forgive me. Yeah, say, forgive me. Yeah. That you can do that. You can do that a million times. Yeah, you know. Right before you die. Yeah. Please forgive me. I used to think that too. I'm yeah, gonna just say, that. God forgive me yeah. right before I die. Yeah. That don't even make sense. Might not get it out. <laughs> yeah. What if you can't talk? Oh man, hold on, man. Look. <laughs> You better yeah. think that shit. <laughs> you ain't gotta talk, talk to him right. in the mind. Right. Talk, talk to him with the mental. Yeah. 
I, I thought he was going to say it. Yeah. He didn't say it, so. <laughs> you got to say the word, buddy. You got to say it. Y'all go through a lot of crazy shit. Like I, like I said, I've been watching y'all for years, man. Like, yeah. when I came into it, my pop put me on, like, I really didn't have no direction of where to start. So, like, I started watching y'all, like, mm -hmm. the, uh, the other camp in Harlem, the dude with the gold tooth, his hey, ass crazy. Yeah, What's his for name? Sure. His ass wild. Yeah, yeah, you cool he, with him? Yeah, I'm cool with him. Yeah, he wild. Yeah. Fuck that goddamn big head yeah. ass white baby. Like, he go crazy. Yeah. So I'm like, hold on, this ain't the one. So y'all was more like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, hold on, man. What my mother's yeah, like, what the fuck you know about you? I'm like, hold on, the trip and shit, yeah. right? He won't trip. Because there's a way you can speak. Like, yeah. You ain't got to speak like that. You got to you gotta do, you have to have a certain level of professionalism yeah, right. when you're doing the job. And if you speak from that type of emotional, it you're takes away from off. your yeah. speak. Right, it takes away from the speaking, mm -hmm. where it's better to just be more intelligent right. with what you're speaking. You know, we had to battle with a lot of people in Harlem. Yeah. So I debated like the Polites, who's in jail right now, I like to always, I have to remind people of that, he's in jail right now. So I used to have to battle like the Polites and stuff like that. I even battled with- I seen all that coming yeah. on trial. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I watched yeah. all that, man. I had to battle all of that because they yeah, was- Whack 100? Yeah, I battled him too. <laughs> whack 100, yeah. he was, he the top no, I better whack over. Can we get white people to kiss our feet? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, on we, YouTube, bro. Yeah, that's okay. on YouTube. Yeah, we do that. <laughs> yeah, we be out at the camp. So like, so like, I'm gonna, I'm, so I'm gonna paint the picture True for you. Story, so we like at the camp. See, say this to camp. Money bag teaching. I'm reading for money bag. He dropping on what the white man did to us. White people, y'all the audience. Well, I don't want to make y'all white. I wouldn't disrespect them. Nah. <laughs> I ain't going to make none of y'all white. They but let's say. They, they watch. But let's say. <laughs> yeah, so the crowd. So y'all, you white people. Y'all listening to money bag drop it. And you be like, damn, I feel sorry for what my ancestors did. And so we'll read in the Bible where it says um, they'll, they'll be nursing us, that they'll get down on their knees and apologize for what they did. And so we'll say to you, you sorry for what your ancestors did? They'd be like, yeah, get on your knees and apologize. And they get on their knees and kiss this boot right here. I seen it. And they don't just kiss money bag boots. They kiss they the whole kiss camp. mine, they gonna kiss yeah. yours, they gonna kiss yours. We get people in the crowd, kiss they boot. We do all that. And they say they sorry. I seen one, one, one dude talking crazy to a camp, you know, by, you know, he didn't believe in God and all that mm -hmm. going crazy. Walked off, got struck by fucking lightning. <laughs> yeah. So we get no that. bullshit. I was like, what about the fuck? Like, yeah. it was mocking him. Like, it broad day, but mocking him clearly. Walked off and got hit by lightning. Mm -hmm. And so we get in arguments with black people saying that, we were wrong for doing that. When we not, say, what like, we doing? never tell them or yeah, force bro. them, like, you gotta do it. They want to do it. Yeah. That shit real. It's on YouTube. Man, this this shit. This shit crazy. <laughs> yeah, they kiss it. What's the White craziest women? moment you got, like? Because I done seen another episode where nigga was like, I'm gonna go home and get my gun. He looks serious. Yeah. And I, I think it was ISUP. Yeah, yeah, we've had that happen a lot of times. We tell him to go get it. Yeah, but you know, I love, bro, from man to man, all I love the fitness, the fearlessness in y'all, like just uh -huh. fearless, bro. Yeah. Like, then nobody buzz. Niggas uh -huh. like, go, nigga, go get yeah. that gun. Come on back. Listen, here. the cat, the cat come and say, I'm gonna go get my gun. And so he walk off and then he come back. And then we like, no, nah, go get your gun and come back. Yeah, they was like, And one time the cat came back, but he, so he changed his shirt. So he had like a black shirt. He came back with like a pink shirt. But when he came back, he just walked past. He didn't like do anything. Mm -hmm. And you know, that do represent a fearlessness because it's dangerous. It's extremely dangerous to like, I would never tell nobody, hey, just go out there and teach the Bible. Because you can say some stuff that's gonna be offensive, mm -hmm. but we get threatened with guns, with knives. Um, sometimes they might try to spit on us, and the, the sad part about it, most of the time, it be our own people yeah, that's yeah. doing it. Mm -hmm. Like even when we are doing the boot kiss, when they come and kiss the boot, it's black people that argue with us. That's why I mentioned like whack. Like me and him got into a full out argument because he said that we putting black people in danger by making white people kiss the boot. And then black people, they'll pick up the white woman. They'll be trying to pick the white woman up. Like, no, nah, I don't do that. And we doing this for them. And that's mental oppression. That's mental slavery. That's what we call that Stockholm Syndrome. You know, Stockholm Syndrome is like when you've been enslaved so long, you can only feel, if you see that your master is getting damaged or have a problem, you inherently want to protect them and stop them. 
even when the master is saying, I'm sorry. Yeah, we get that done. So it'd be dangerous out there. I love it though. Like when you say the fearlessness, Man, I I'll be listen, I pray for the day. The closest was like when um when Polite act like he wanted to fight. Yeah. Like when so there, there's this guy named Polite, he like this uh fake conscious nigga that everybody used to believe. And I was calling him a child molester in 2013. Nobody believed me. They said that um I was faking and fronting because his father, his spiritual father, the guy he learned from, Malachi York is in jail for child molestation. So I was just putting two and two together. If he following him, he probably a child molester too. And so nobody believed it. So back in 2015, when my brother Kadaza says his spiritual father is a child molester, he acts like he wants to fight. Now at the time, me and him was all right, so I was waiting to see if he got it together. But then I'm thinking, okay, well, let's fight. If you want to fight, you know, because one thing about it, we believe in the Bible, but if you attempt to come at us, uh, we'll probably, we'll annihilate you. Like we'll, you know, we will defend ourselves. Like we're not soft, we're not sissies or nothing like that. So we'll defend ourselves. So when he came with the, like he wanted to fight and I'm thinking we're gonna fight, I'm like, well, cross the line. Like if you want to cross the line, let's cross the line or not. And then he backed down. He didn't want to fight. And then we found out like th three years ago, 2020 or 2021, he actually, molested a 14 year old girl he's in jail for it now but we battle all kind of cats like that that come up in front of us and want to argue white people do argue but not too much fights with with them it's always hey pal i disagree right it's usually <laughs> it's usually like that it's usually like that we might battle over what do you want me to do like kiss that. your boot yeah <laughs> fuck you <laughs> I'm not doing, doing that. Yeah, Yo, you gotta see their face. Y'all gotta see their face when you gotta see the other white people face when they see this white, especially if it's a white woman. When they see this white woman on her knees kissing black people boots. You know how inspiring <laughs> it is for black people though? That's crazy. Yeah. Black people like, damn, you got the white people to do yeah, this. Fuck me up. How you do that? By just talking, you ain't forced her to do it. Yeah, we just told her, she said, you know, that's it. That shit be inspiring, man. And so what do white people get? They feel like they... Yeah, for them, they feel like I'm apologizing for my ancestors. Yeah, yeah they, I ain't got to like nothing now. Something. Oh, y'all, I, 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 I kiss the boot. I can't I be racist. Boot. I kiss the boot. I can't be racist. That's what they think for a moment. Yeah. I ain't racist no more. Because I kiss the boot. What if they was on a scavenger hunt? Just kiss his boots. Yeah. <laughs> we get white people on. That shit don't surprise me. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's go get hammered and kiss the boots, man. <laughs> where, the, where the Israelites at? We want to kiss the boots. Man, I'm shit faced, mm -hmm. man. Where yeah, the fuck you doing something wrong? The motherfucker seek it out. You ain't even heard the speech yet. The closest is I like, know. Oh, I know what you guys say. Yeah, yeah. I already know. I was here already. <laughs> but dude, I'm like really, really, really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, I know, I know what you're gonna say. I know the script. Dude, dude, I, 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 my fucking it. heart's broken for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get to the boot ball. <laughs> what did you say it was in? Isaiah Thomas covered that one. <laughs> this is fucking gonna get good. <laughs> bro, can I just chill with you guys, bro? <laughs> How fucking bad I feel. <laughs> you guys want some donuts? <laughs> Yeah, man. White people fuck around and, and take over the movement. Yeah. The only closest, like, you know, I debate a lot of white people too. I go on like clan sites, and um, I call them clan sites. They don't, they, they what like. Uh, they gonna, what if they gonna want to join up with? Dude, like we don't always have to agree, but like, can I, like, you know, let me, let me in, bro. Yeah, we have to do this shit with you guys. Ass, yeah, but yeah. yeah, yeah, well, we don't let them in, though. <laughs> <laughs> we don't let them in. Hell no, we ain't never let no white guy in there, man. Oh, Muhammad man. Ali, I think it was Muhammad Ali said, if um if he was at his if he was at the door, and it's like a thousand snakes coming, seven hundred are non poisonous, two hundred are poisonous. Did he let? Do all the snakes come in and try to sort out the 200 or do we just close the door so he don't get bit? He said, I'm gonna just close the door. So we would just close the door. So we would never say every single white person is that. 
But if you think about every movement we have, when you let them white people in, sometimes we get on, somehow we get you on did. the bottom. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We don't never reap the benefits. If it ain't a white person, it's somebody from the community. You know what I mean? So either way, it's something like that. But we never come out on top, right. ever. They hijack everything. Civil rights hijacked by the community and white women. Black Lives Matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, true story. Yeah, civil rights hijacked. White women gonna find a way to get involved. Word is born. No matter that what the fuck it is. That action benefited white women more than it benefited black people, period. Black Lives Matter, community movement. That's not even about black people. When you look at their, their, their readout, it says we're about the woman, the child, and the parent. It didn't say the woman, the man, and the child, which would make sense. It said the woman, the child, and the parent. So somebody got to be the voice for the black man. You know, the black man is the only male on the planet that could be dogged out to no end, even by women that sleep with him. Still dog him out to no end. Nobody builds that black man up. Nobody takes that black man and see something in him where if he's on top, like we got a lot of famous black leaders in history. So it's not like black men ain't never been great. So who made us be null and void? Who created that movement to make us null and void? That's what America did. When they saw like the Fred Hamptons, the Malcolms, the, even if I don't like Martin, but even want to say Martin, when they killed Martin, the point of killing Martin was just to tell black people, even if you be nice to us, we'll kill you. Damn. Just think about that. Martin, Martin didn't want to fight Martin with so-called nonviolent. Martin was preaching everybody join and be one. And they still killed that nigga. And then you got a militant like Malcolm, and they killed him too. So that showed black people that whether you're militant or nice, we will destroy you. And we lost, and we became fearful of them. We became fearful of the government. Then you get the feminist movement that taught the black woman that you don't need a man, that the only way you can get government support is if you get rid of the man. But you need the man to get government support. Ain't that a trip? Mm -hmm. You need the man to have sex with, to have the child, so you can get the government support and then kick that man out. And then now you got all these goddamn babies running around without a damn daddy, wondering why they're reckless. Wondering why they when you see these young black kids as reckless as they are, it's because they're acting like a woman. Because they did not have a man to look at to see manhood, to see masculinity, to see a calm, to see how to solve problems. They just saw you. So when you see them loud mouth, you loud mouth, so that's why they loud mouth. Right. And this ain't a fault to the woman other than her being slow to seeing how miseducated she was. Her feminist movement was the only movement that meant that she didn't need a man. The white woman's feminist movement was to get a job, but she still kept her man. And they still keep their government benefits. They didn't lose their benefits. They didn't say that the white man had to be kicked out the house, just us. And so now we come to resurrect black men. If you don't resurrect the black man, you don't have a nation. Now, if you don't resurrect any man, you don't have a nation, but the black man is who we focusing on today. And that's what we about. Real spiel. Welcome to the 85 South Show. See? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no shit. Tell them about the schools, where they can find the schools. Oh, that's man. And that, what's the address in Atlanta? 3353 Glenwood Road, Decatur, Georgia. That's where we have the school here in Atlanta. But if you go to our website, like ishbk.com, um, like I'm from New York, so our school is 2279 3rd Avenue in Harlem. We got schools in Philly, D.C., California. We're in the U.K. We got school in Jamaica, Trinidad, school in Alaska, Canada. Wherever we at, there's a school there. So I would just gotta go watch that then. I would love to see y'all in the UK talking. Yeah, oh, yeah, we in the UK. That's why you're wrong, Chappie. Yeah, that's how they, I don't know if they say Chappie. I don't know if they say Chappie, but they be over there talking to Justin. But, and what's beautiful about the UK, we went to the UK, and if you actually go to like the King James Palace and all that, you'll see all the black shit that we talk about. All that King James black and all that. Our brothers went over there and was able to see that. Uh, Captain Nakai went over there and he saw it. We actually had, what, what feast was that? Do we have a feast? feast we had a feast of tabernacles in King James Palace last year. That's, that's hard. Right in the palace, yeah, that's hard. Right in there drinking from the, the best of the chalices, the best drink you could find. We was drinking it. 
right there. I'm sliding next time. I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> I, go, I got a son out there. I go out there all the time. I'll be. I'll be hey, we're gonna be, we got a, uh, a cookout here. What's the park? What's the park, y'all, man? Uh, East Lake Park. East Lake Park, July 6th. We're gonna have a cookout, man. Y'all should come on out. East Lake Park, July 6th. Okay. Having a cookout. Yep. Like, I'll be back in two weeks, you know, for July. So I get, think I'll get here July 4th to like the 6th. We'll be out here. Okay, bet. And that's for the community. Like, so, you know, because niggas like to eat. So food is always a way to fish. So we have a free cookout. It's free to the public. Anybody, long as you one of us, we don't feed none. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, can I have a rib? Absolutely nah. not. Can my dog have a rib? <laughs> we be like, nah, nah. It's like an African come up. We don't feed them Chinese. Damn. Damn. Yeah. I'm famous, like so. Like I'm gonna tell you a funny story. So. I'm, uh, there's they, my brother Sinetta, so I got a brother Sinetta. I, I've done a lot of work with uh, this brother Sinetta. He kind of runs like uh, what they call a house of consciousness, right, on YouTube. So he's interviewing me one time with this little African boy. We find out he African. He asked me if this African can come to my cookout. I said no. And the earth, they was crucifying me for that. But when you think about it, when we think about slavery, when our men, women, and children was being sold over here. Where was the Africans that sent one ship, one boat, one canoe to get us out of this condition when they sold us? You know, a white man never touched African soil for slaves. The Africans brought us to the white man to slaves. He never came into a village. He never captured a slave. He never did none of that. Africans captured us and sold us. So just like a Jewish man wouldn't take care of a German, I'm not taking care of them. I can't take care of people that slaughtered my ancestors. That's where we should go with our level of integrity. Now, if the African want to buy them body butters, oh yeah, you can buy the body butter. <laughs> <laughs> buy the body butter because yeah, like, he might smell good for the first time in his life. You know, they Damn. funky as hell. Damn. I, yeah, I'm a comedian too. Some. All right, well there you have it. <laughs> hey, well, there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> My personal big brother. That's ASU right. PK. That's right. Captain Tazari out, man. Appreciate you for coming to Ubit, man. Right. Yeah. I appreciate y'all having me. And we got the full of day, man. We got that time, bro. We got the work. Already. Oh, my man. Okay. Okay. What you got for me? Got the shirt. I'm about to throw this shirt on, too, man. Okay. You got the whole track, too, man. Oh, you got the whole tracks? Yeah, yeah. Is it socks? Socks, man. That's how we look. Oh, you got everything in there. Socks? You got socks. I'm going to the gym. This a track suit? Yeah. I'm going to wear this to the gym tomorrow. But we, you know, we work out, too. Oh, word? Yeah, we stay in the gym. You and the guy. Yeah, I stay in the gym. <laughs> I'm going to rock this whole 85 South joint to the gym yeah, tomorrow. We're going tomorrow. Hey, man, we out of here. 85 South. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.